Welcome to a video essay of the differences between vertical video and traditional video in less than two minutes. First, let's talk about where video came from and help understand what traditional video means. Way after silent picture became motion pictures, and somewhere between the time cinema was called the silver screen and HBO was known as the home box office, we used to consume all of our video on square TV sets. There's a lot to talk about with these TV sets your grandparents used to watch, but let's talk about how they dealt with displaying movies. See, the challenge was getting a movie to fit within a square, or the 4x3 set. Most times, distributors of the movies would do a few things when translating a film to the home audience. One, they would do a letterbox version, or two, they'd do pan and scan. Now both personally are annoying because my parents used to say, why did I pay all this money for a letterbox version and they can't even use the entire screen? Secondly. I couldn't always deal with the shifting of the image in pan and scan because I knew that something was missing or just the, the movement was a little weird. But why take my word for it? Just listen to what these guys had to say. That is, in a sense, technically redirecting the movie. Somewhere in the early 2000s, the technology shift from square TV went to flat screen. Now, a lot of regulation happened in this time to adhere to this new format. Square went to rectangular, or 16 by 9, and things, they started looking a bit more cinematic. Yesterday, Instagram released Instagram TV, which essentially means long-form video told in vertical video, or portrait mode. See, this form of video is similar to 4x3 video. Video information needs to be realigned. The distinct rule of thirds composition that makes shots interesting need to be reimagined for vertical video. There's a lot to consider, but that will be for the next project.